Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for the dailysheeple.com and this is your new shot. Uh first and foremost, I got to say uh, prayers go out to Tom Petty and his family uh for uh whatever's going on uh, with Tom Petty, I guess is not so good. I'm a big fan of his music. Great great songs, lots of good memories. And uh Tom Petty not doing so good, so uh send prayers and positive vibes his way for sure. Now getting to uh news According to the Associated Press, the U.S., of course, has spies all over the world, Cuba being no stranger to U.S. spies. Well, according to AP, U.S. spies in Havana have been hit by these bizarre health attacks, which surprisingly enough sound very similar to the scalar attacks of the 60s when the Russians actually we're st- we're toying with our embassy officials over in uh what was the Soviet Union back in the 1960s and what they did was they took a very scaled down version of harp uh the big 1 billion watt transmitter up in Alaska and they pointed it at the embassy and it had some pretty bad negative health effects and it utilizes extreme low frequency to muddle with your brain and the natural frequency that we operate on. You know, the earth operates uh, at what's called the Schumann resonance, and then we also kind of work in conjunction with that. It's part of our environment. We're all tied together, the planet, humans. That's why when um, humans leave the earth, man, it screws them up really bad. Not so much in low earth orbit. You can go on the space station, everything's fine, but when you leave the region of the earth out of its influence, it really has a very negative effect on the human body because we're lacking that external clock that is provided by the planet. Anyway, it says frightening attacks on U.S. personnel in Havana struck the heart of America's spy network in Cuba with intelligence operatives among the first and most severely affected. It wasn't until U.S. spies posted to the embassy under diplomatic cover reported hearing bizarre sounds and experiencing even stranger physical effects that the United States realized something was wrong, according to individuals familiar with the situation. Now, while the attack started within days of President Trump's surprise election in November, the precise timeline remains unclear, including whether intelligence officers were the first victims hit or merely the first victims to report it. Now, to date, the Trump administration largely has described the 21 victims as U.S. Embassy personnel or members of the diplomatic community. That description suggests only bona fide diplomats and their family members were struck and no other logical motivation behind or beyond disrupting U.S.-Cuba relations. But behind the scenes, though, investigators immediately started researching for explanations in the darker, rougher world of spycraft and counterespionage. Given that so many of the first reported cases involved Intelligence workers posted at the U.S. Embassy. That revelation confirmed to the Associated Press by over a half a dozen officials adds yet another mystery element to a year-long saga that the Trump administration says may not be over. So this is why, of course, they've started to um, scale back their operations at that embassy. But interestingly enough, you have a lot of clandestine personnel that are working under the cover of diplomat of diplomacy in Cuba, could they be perhaps soft plotting to overthrow the Cuban government? Because we've never seen the United States do that before, right? So why not? Under the cover of diplomacy, you have a bunch of <clears throat> diplomats, if you will, at the U.S. Embassy, all the while feeding money, perhaps training, supplies, any sort of lo- uh, logistics required for a coup. And then all of a sudden, boom. Now, what if, what if Ramon Castro got word of this and started to employ some tactics? And believe me, this isn't new. This is old school tactics. But again, it shows just how influential Tesla's technology was, Nikola Tesla, and also what we could do with it. And look at what it's being used for, to toy or to... Uh, negatively affect the health of personnel down in the uh, and down in Cuba, U.S. 
diplomatic personnel. <clears throat> yes. Now imagine if we actually use this technology for good. Imagine what that could be like. Imagine if we just left Cuba alone and let them do their own thing. Imagine what that would be like. Now I know a lot of people down in Florida, a lot of Cuban uh, people that have immigrated from Cuba. I know that there's a lot of things that happen down there that may not be um, nice. But I'll tell you this, <laughs> here in the United States, it's just as bad. We have a private prison industrial complex that's fed by a police state. Kind of sounds very similar to Cuba. We've got torture that happens all the time. Um, we have the loss of natural human rights here in the United States, just like they have down in Cuba. Look at the only difference between Cuba and the United States is at least Cuba's out in front, is out in the open about it. You know, here, oh, they deny it. They try to sugarcoat it. Oh, you know, it's, uh, it's everybody else's fault but the police. You know, it's everybody else's fault. Everybody points a finger at everybody else here. Down in Cuba, you know, the Castro's uh, were no, uh, they, they told, hey, this is the way it is. We're communists. This is the way it's going to be. And there you go. And everybody knows it, you know. Now, if people don't like it, then... Get off your butts and take over that country. Just like we did here 200 and something years ago, 220 something years ago. And guess what? Actually, wow, it's been a long time. And guess what? We could do it again today if people would get off their couches, stop watching the NFL, you know, started plugging into what's going on in this country and starting to get active and making changes for the better. We could all do that. We have the power. We also have the power to do nothing. That's another thing we could do in a heartbeat. Do nothing. Think about it. Don't pay into the system. Don't go to work. You know, let industry suffer. Just stop. For two weeks, that's all it would take. This country would come to a grinding halt and they would have to make changes. I mean, we could change this country in no time. But people would have to be willing to go outside their comfort zone. I just don't see enough people willing to do that. So until that happens, folks, it is what it is. But I got to tell you, there's not much difference, you know, between Cuba and the United States. That's all I'm going to say. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's new shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at TheDailySheeple.com. Have a great day, everybody.